What's up everybody, for Luminatachi here, you know what it is, and we're going to be getting into all the information World of Warcraft has to hold from BlizzCon of 2016. Everything that is for us to see in the near future of World of Warcraft Legion and beyond itself. But it was mainly just about World of Warcraft Legion because it was just released, so what did you guys expect? A new expansion already? Nah. But they got some great information for us, so let's go ahead and check out what the World of Warcraft panels not just panel, there was a few of them, and everything it has to be told from the BlizzCon of 2016 that happened on November 4th and 5th, again, of 2016. Come on, Itachi, BlizzCon 2016. Let's go ahead and just get into it. I'm done with what I'm talking about. So, we have no cinematics or cool trailers, but again, we did get a ton of amazing information. So, many new adventures lie ahead in Legion. Uh, game director Ion Hazikosas explored some... Upcoming content uh, updates for the World of Warcraft Legion and what's next panel at 2016. Uh, delivering, again, I just kept saying, I keep saying 2016. Del I know it is. Delivering new content. One of the key goals for Legion is to make sure they're delivering a steady stream of content, unlike Warlords of Draenor, through, which is why I quit. Kind of. One of the reasons. Throughout the expansion, we want to make sure there's always something to look forward to do. They also want to make better, uh, take better advantage of the very uh, nature of MMOs by providing a living, breathing world with things changing day to day or week to week and offering a wide variety of content and new rewards. It's going to be really cool what we're going to be getting into. To accomplish this, they're going to be building our pat the patch structure in Legion to deliver content updates of varying sizes. You'll see everything from a small patch like 6.2.3 which added Cataclysm time walking and other features to larger updates like 6.2 which was the Fury of Hellfire raid or something in between like patch 7.1 return to Karazhan. There's no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to patch releases now. Looking into patch 7.1.5, they've released 7.1 which was uh, Karazhan and now they're approaching to 7.1.5. One, they're considering a small patch. This pat kind of patch contains features like system updates, rewards, uh, and evergreen content, things that aren't tied to any overarching story. And there's, uh, here's some of what to expect in patch 7.1.5. Time walking in Pandaria. Time walking dungeons are a good example of evergreen content in this patch. They'll be adding six Mists of Pandaria dungeons into the time walking cycle. Uh, Jade Serpent, Stormstop Brewery, Shadow Pan, Gate of the Seti Sung, Mogushan, and Siege of Nuzao Temple. Brawler's Guild Season 3. Brawler's Guild closed the doors um, for renovation towards the end of Warlords of Draenor, but the staff is prepare preparing to reopen uh, for a new season. In 7.1.5, they're introducing dozens of new bosses to test your grit along with aiding a new challenge in the form of rumbles, which will occasionally trigger and pull spectators into the action to take on a raid boss. Players will also be able to earn uh, Brawler's Gold to provide some additional communal benefits uh, for fellow brawlers and buy new rewards for taking part in the events. Plus, there are shirts, lots of lots of shirts, and a basilisk mount. Micro holidays. Unlike holiday events such as Winter Beal, uh, which run multiple weeks, micro holidays offer brief holiday cell events uh, with, fee uh, with new activities uh, for players to take part in. For example, the citizens of Azeroth might be invited to celebrate a specific moment in history just for a single day. These events are meant to be activities players can participate in for fun, rather than for uh, game-changing rewards. With patch 7.1.5, they'll be rolling out a variety of micro-holidays with the intent of adding more of them over time. Each one is meant to uh, make the world feel more alive without making players feel like they need to participate for big rewards while still providing some more variety and fun, which is very cool and I'm looking forward to that. Blades Edge Arena update. Much like the update to uh, Nagrand Arena, uh, we th they thought it was time to do a little redecorating to Blades Edge Mountain Arena. While they're very happy with the way the map plays, they've added a new shiny new coat of paint and it looks more consistent with the rest of the world. And they're introducing a new fun feature. Your battles at, in Blade Edge will now be shoutcast by an ogre announcer who will call out events in particular of importance. They look forward to seeing how that turns out. Class updates. Legion featured one of the biggest class overhauls yet, and since launch they've been listening to feedback from us uh, for making balance adjustments. And they've been somewhat uh, limited in terms of what they could change in hotfixes and first patch. Most of the changes up to this point have been contrasted to hotfix-based uh, numerical tuning. Patch 7.1.5 is when they're really going to try tackling some of the broader class issues. 
They're taking a look at the talent rows so they can increase the diversity of talents. For example, in the barrage row for marksman hunters, it feels there is only one option in the row that you must take regardless of your playstyle. There's room for fine tuning and they make it so everyone feels that they customize their own character and liking. They're also looking at relative weightings of secondary stats such as haste, mastery, and crit. They're often pretty uh, disparate for different specs and this uh, disparity can sometimes make it feel as if an item that should be an upgrade with a higher item level isn't as desirable as they would like. They want to make sure the gaps between best and worst aren't so large and to distort gameplay. They're going to making a lot of uh, efforts towards that end of patch 7.1.5. This patch also allows them to make tweaks, tweaks to uh, specific rotations uh, look at how things have played out since Legion and find out where the room to improve and overall fluidity of the field of different specs and more. Patch 7.2, the Tomb of Sargeras. If patch 7.1.4 is a small patch, what exactly is a big patch? In this case, it's going to be patch 7.2, the Tomb of Sargeras. This patch introduced uh, larger pieces of content, which include a new raid, the continuation of the class order campaign, and much more. Return to the Broken Shore. The demonic forces of the Burning Legion have built massive structures on the Broken Shore as a base of operations for the assault of Azeroth. It's here that the Horde and the Alliance experience a series of tragedies in the hand of the Legion. Now that they've regrouped, acquired, and the new weapons of power and recruited new allies, it's time to make a triumphant return. Where factions failed, the class orders will succeed. Each class will continue their class order hall campaign in the Broken Shore, and a new faction will be introduced the Armies of Legion Fall. Players will take a, a part in helping build the Legion Fall base to establish the initial foothold of the island, then work their way through the Legion's defenses and eventually reach the stronghold. To do this, the class orders will need to work together, build up the forces by fortifying ancient elven buildings, and upgrading them into uh, into one of three buildings, Nether Disruptor, Command Center, or Mage Tower, which will provide additional benefits. Players will also discover new world quests in Broken Shore, along with other new challenges. The Legion Assaults. Remember the Legion invasions in the Azeroth prior to the expansion launch? As a fight against the Legion intensifies, new assaults have been unleashed within the various zones of the Broken Isles now and heroes will be implored to thwart them once again. And the assaults intensify, the battle will uh, culminate in a new three-player scenario that takes the fight to the Legion ships above. Flying! If you haven't been working on your way through the Broken Isles Pathfinder, I haven't even gotten Legion yet, bro. Make sure you're on your way uh, before the introduction of Part 2. Once players have earned their achievement, they'll be rewarded with Broken Isles flying account-wide. What's even better than flying over Broken Isles? Flying... Uh, uh, over them with your new epic class mounts by completing the Broken Shore campaign and maxing out your Legion Fall reputation. You'll be rewarded with a mount that's unique to your class as a symbol of your dedication to defeating the Legion, which we'll be going over in a little bit on how they look. New Raid Zones, the Tomb of Sargeras. On the opposite end of the Broken Shore, the Tomb of Sargeras lies in wait. Formerly the uh, Temple of Elun, this raid dungeon will contain nine new bosses to conquer. After gaining the fifth pillar of creation, the Eye of Amonthal, uh, from within the strong, uh, from within the Nighthold, you'll descend into the depths of the tomb and use the pillars to seal the por uh, portal, uh, portal through. Well, I can't believe I couldn't even pronounce that portal through which the Legion entered Azeroth. New Dungeon, Cathedral of Eternal Night. It's been some time since they've added a new dungeon in a patch, so. They thought, it, we just got carries on. It was about time. Patch 7.2 also features a new 4-boss four uh, uh, dungeon. Oh my gosh, come on, bro. Cathedral of Eternal Night. While the raid descends into the tomb, the dungeon ascends into the upper reaches of the spire. You'll use the Aegis of Agrimar to open the rest of the tomb. PvP brawls inspired by the Blizzard game brawls mode, Battleground brawls, will alter... The typical rule set of Battlegrounds. A new brawl will be available weekly, which will add variety to gameplay and give players some fun new activities to check out. Here are some of the examples Chow Shorford's Terran Mill, Instant Cap Wars on Gulch, Packed Out 15 to 15 Arena. Oh my gosh! Whoa! Gravity Laps, Winter Over. Oh! Snap, Crackle Pop! Eye of the Horn! Woo! Horny! Um, okay, I'll stop. Artifact updates. Artifact weapons are one of the major features of the expansion. 
with many players increasing their artifact knowledge, unlocking new traits, and customizing the looks of the weapon to suit their character. As a part of patch 7.2, they're making a few new system updates to go along with that. The first of these updates is the addition of a new artifact traits that can be earned and unlocked via a new artifact campaign which you can embark on once you've maxed out your artifact weapon. There will be a, at least three new traits per weapon, and you can unlock the ability to spend a fourth point on every existing minor trait on your weapon. There will be approximately 15 new traits for players to earn and spend and upgrade and to customize a character. There will also be a new artifact knowledge levels to make sure the adequate catch-up mechanics for those who switch between characters have alt or are just coming into the expansion a bit late. For additional variety of customization, they're adding new relics that modify two artifact traits instead of just one so that players can further guide the direction that they want for their character progress. Beyond unlocking new traits, the new artifact campaign will provide an opportunity for players to show mastery of their class with a solo skill challenge which will unlock a new appearance for their chosen spec weapon. These appearances have been inspired by previously class quest lines that led to weapons like Anathema, Benediction, and Rook de la. No grouping required or allowed and completing the challenge will reward a truly distinctive appearance. Dungeon Updates even as they're adding new dungeons, they're looking to working on keep up the uh, dungeons relevant through the entirety of the expansion. Kirazan offers an opportunity for mythic keystones, but at nine bosses, it's a bit large to fit within the keystone structure. To address this, they're splitting the dungeon into upper and lower KZ. They will be two separate four boss sections that will fit into the system alongside existing dungeons that will um, and the new Cathedral of Eternal Night dungeon. This will bring the total of Mythic Keystone Dungeons to 12. To make sure all Mythic Keystone Dungeons are kept relevant, the, they'll also bump up the baseline difficulty along with increasing item rewards to go along with this. They'll be experimenting with some new feet, uh, new affixes and keystones. Player will get to see uh, Patch 7.2 The Tomb of Sedges on PTR sometime after the launch of Patch 7.1.5. Next up, we're going to be looking into the uh, specific class mounts that you'll be getting after you complete all of your flying uh, pre-achieves for um, Legion. So we're going to be looking at the monk. As you guys can see, we got the panda monk on top of its class mount, and it looks very monkey. Wait, what? It looks very monkish, huh? Okay, it looks like a monk mount. All of these class specific mounts look very great, and I can't wait to show you guys the warlock mount because I'm I super love it. Oh, right away, son! You got the warlock mount. It basically dread seed 3.0 with the green fire effect, looking boss as with all that armor. It looks absolutely amazing. And remember, all these mounts can fly. The hunter mount is a flying. Basically, it's like it's like they threw every hunter pet into into one. You got the wolf face. You got like freaking bear feet, arms. You got like birdie wordy uh, feathers going on to make it fly. I don't even know what's going on with this mount, son. The mage gets some little cool um, mechanical sanding thingy that you get to hover. Ho they basically got to have a craft. Warriors got some uber looking Drake over here. Uh, the Paladins got their, I think they probably got the worst, uh, the end of the stick here. They got basically their Crusader mount, uh, kind of like the Warlock, but Warlock's cooler. Priest got an owl, flying owl thingy going on here. Uh, the Rogues got this thing, I don't even know what this is, to be honest, but it looks roguey. Uh, oh, Shamans are so beast. They got a flying owl, no, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that in the play. Druids got basically some, uh, kind of like the Priest one, but it's more Druid looking. Owl form. Um, it's a form, of course, because they druids are cool like that. They get to transform and things. So that's a brand new druid form, the flying. Uh, demon hunters get a very, very cool mount that represents them. And Death Knights as well. I think Death Knights got probably the coolest mount of the batch. And what was also released is in December, as they always do, Make a Wish Foundation, they release an in game pet. And as you guys can see, we've got Mischief here, which is a Fell Legion pup going on action over here. It looks really, really cool, and I can't wait to get it myself. And also to support Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that was all that was released. But we got one more thing. I want to go ahead and uh, dive on in to the uh, new artifacts and uh, how they're going to look once you've completed the next stages. So you got Death Knights here. We got the Demon Hunters. We got the Druids, and of course they get their forms. You got another Druid form here. 
We get hunters going on here. If you want to go ahead and pause the video, be sure to go ahead and do so. We got mages. We've got the monks. The monks on the far left look really cool. Then you got paladins. We got the priest set. We got rogues. We got shamans. The warlock set, brand new. We get the warrior as well. And I just want to say for those of you that tuned in, got any questions, post down below. Thank you very much for tuning in. For the win, Itachi is out.